Hey everyone, and welcome to the AI Research Roundup. I'm your host, Alex. Today we're diving into a paper focused on improving how large language models handle math. It's titled Mega Math Pushing the Limits of Open Math Corpora, and it was published April 3rd, 2025. Um, basically, the researchers point out that while math reasoning is crucial for AI, there's a shortage of large, high quality open data sets for pre trained math focused LLMs. So they present Mega Math a new open data set with a whopping 371 billion tokens curated from web data math related code and even synthetic data sources. And if you want to dive deeper, um, the team also released the GitHub repo for MegaMath. This image shows that repo page. It mainly points you to the huge 370 billion token data set over on Hugging Face. And it breaks down how to grab the different parts, you know, the web data, the code, or the synthetic variants. Looks like they've included the data pipeline code in there too, so you can see how they actually built it. Okay, so this figure figure one gives a nice visual overview of how the MegaMath dataset is put together, like where the different parts come from. Um, you can see at the top, the main sources, Common Crawl, feeds into MegaMath Web. GitHub provides the data for MegaMath code, and then large language models, indicated by those logos, are used to generate MegaMath synth. It also shows that MegaMath Web has that high quality subset called MegaMath Web Pro, and the synthetic part is broken down into QA code and interleaved text and code. It really maps out the different streams feeding into the final 370 billion token dataset. Okay, so building on that dataset overview, figure two here dives a bit deeper into how MegaMath stacks up against other existing open math datasets. Um, on the left, you see a performance graph, specifically chain of thought performance, plotted against the number of training tokens used. It compares different MegaMath subsets, like WebPro and the top 50%, against datasets like FineMath and Infim WebMath. And on the right, there's a pyramid-like diagram showing the different layers of MegaMath Web, from the full setup to the refined WebPro, visually comparing their size and quality against those other datasets. It really emphasizes how they tried to push both quantity and quality. Right, so building on that overview, figure three here gives us a closer look at the actual pipeline they used to create just the MegaMath web part, starting from Common Crawl data. We saw earlier that Common Crawl was the source. Well, this shows the steps. Um, they start with URL filtering, then reformat the HTML specifically to handle math elements better. After that, it looks like a two-stage process, a fast but potentially noisy extraction first, followed by filtering and deduplication, and then a slower, cleaner re-extraction step using something called trafilatura to get the final high-quality math text that makes up MegaMathWeb. So that was the web data pipeline. Now, figure four here shows us how they built the MegaMath code part we saw back in the overview figure. Um, Instead of common crawl, like for the web data, they start with stack version 2, which is a general code corpus. First, they filter this down to specific programming languages useful for math and science, like Python, C++, R, and a few others shown by the logos. Then, well, they use a small language model, which they trained using some LLM scored seed data to actually filter through all that selected code keeping the pieces relevant to math to form the final MegaMath code dataset. Okay, so we just saw how they built the MegaMath code dataset using filtering. Now, figure five here shifts focus to the synthetic part we saw in the overview, MegaMath synth. Um, it actually shows three separate pipelines for creating this synthetic data. On the left, they take web data extract question-answer pairs, and then use LLMs for solution refinement. In the middle, they take the non-Python code we talked about, translate it to Python, again using LLMs, and apply some filtering. And then on the right, they generate interleaved text and code blocks from web data, and importantly, filter those blocks based on verification, like checking for runtime errors to ensure quality. So this figure details those QA translated code and text code block generation processes. Okay, so those were the pipelines. Um, but how did they decide on those specific steps? Well, the paper includes several ablation studies to justify their choices. 
Table 2 here zooms in on the text extraction part of the Megamath web pipeline we saw earlier. It basically compares different text extractors, um, specifically Trifilatura and Racilaparse, and checks if optimizing the HTML for math first, like converting formulas to LaTeX, actually helps performance. And you can see it does. Trifilatura with the HTML optimization gets the best core average score at 23.8 compared to 22.0 without it. This shows their HTML processing step was pretty crucial for getting good quality math text. Okay, so those ablation studies helped justify the pipeline choices. Now table one here gives us the actual numbers, the stats for the final mega math data set we've been talking about. Um, it breaks down the categories we saw earlier, the web domain, the code domain, and the synthetic data. You can see the web part is the biggest chunk with 279 billion tokens, including that high quality web pro subset. Then there's 28 billion tokens from the code domain and 64 and a half billion from the synthetic data, which includes translated code, Q and A, and those text code blocks. Um, altogether, it confirms that massive total of 371.6 billion tokens. And that huge scale really highlights the effort involved over 370 billion tokens. I think the key takeaways are not just the massive size of Megamath, but also how they carefully combined filtered web data, code, and validated synthetic math problems. Um, this kind of resource is super important for training AI models that can actually get better at complex mathematical reasoning. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning in to the AI Research Roundup. I'm your host, Alex.